So after a, a hot stretch before lunch, uh, I've actually skyrocketed up to seventh place coming into this game. Um, it's the first game back from the lunch break, and I'm paired with Joey Malik, who I believe at the time is in second or third place, um, is doing very well. So this is going to be an important matchup. You know, Joey was one of the front runners to win the tournament, even going in. And uh, this is the first of, of many like hard fought, you know, Division One top tier games that I'm going to be a part of over a while. Now, I don't know about me being top tier, but at least my opponent was one of the best players at the field. Um, so we'll go ahead and see what Joey's able to do. This is a really interesting game uh, when it's all said and done. Joey opens with Unau, and uh, I pull I-I-N-N-P-R-V as an opening rack, and I spent a lot of time here, like quite a bit of time. Because Joey's play doesn't really give me a lot of options, but... The options I do have are, are pretty cool for one reason or another. Um, so, you know, initially I, I saw plays like Purin. I saw stuff like Nip. I saw stuff like Vane. Um, and and there, there's some other stuff in there too, Paven for sure. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and remove most of these and run a sim on, on just the, the ones that I deem like some of the better ones in there. So we'll get rid of that guy. We'll get rid of that guy. Um, I actually considered both Raven and Invar quite a bit here as well. You don't want to play Unrip because of the back E hook on Unrip, uh, Unripe. Um, but you might might consider Purin, except that gives up a big Q and an X spot. So those those were both tough to pass up, but had good reasons to pass them up. Um, and then I thought about just Via as well right here. Um, so there's a lot of stuff you know, all pretty reasonably close to one another, but we'll go ahead and hit that sim button and uh, give Quackle some time to do its magic. Um, but but I really like the play I ended up making here, and that play was Vayne right here, because Vayne does not take any back hooks, it's strictly an adjective, um, and there's very little that Joey can actually do after this play. Um, he can play, like, through the U, maybe? If he has an S, he can play Unaus. Um, but other than that, Joey's options are so incredibly limited after Vayne. You can see opponent's next turn after I play Vayne is 22 points, which is ridiculous. Um, you know, versus you can see how, how purely Purin is doing down here. Uh, Joey's average score is almost 40 points per turn after that. So defense, especially at the beginning of a game, is huge. And, and Quackle's usually okay at helping you figure that out. Um, sometimes your opponent's leave is better than the random one Quackle gives them. But um, you can see Nip is a pretty solid play as well. Uh, but Vane, even though it scores very little, the leave is nice. And the options Joey has as a comeback are, are practically nil unless he's going to bingo through that in or bingo with a seven ending in s at 9b um, even then he's going to bingo with the seven ending in an s at l2 so i really liked vane that's what i ended up playing and and quackle seems to think that you know it looks a little silly at first but it's a real solid play so i was happy the sim backed me up there it's kind of a gutsy play to make and after all that consideration and all that defense and everything, Joey does indeed have the S and plays T E's or whatever that word is for, for 24. But at least I got him to burn an S for not very much on the second turn of the game. I'm a little afraid he's got a second one. Um, I draw G-I-N-P-R-T-T, -T, so not really the leave you'd like to, or not really the, the draw you'd like to have here. And my initial gut instinct was play gritty here. You know, there's no reason to go fishing on a board like this, not right now. Um, so just just play gritty, score 20, don't really open up any more spots. And then I'm like, well, he can play down from H1, hit that R, and I don't know if I want to give that up. I, I saw Jip right here, and Jip to me looked really good and defensive, and it holds bingo prone stuff. But Joey might have to open the board, um, and the NT combination yields pretty well to bingo from 9B right there. So, like, Jip looked really solid to me over the board, except I forgot that GYPO had just been added to the dictionary, and Jip is nowhere near as defensive as I thought it was. And uh, so, it, with the gift of hindsight, like, every single time I would play Gritty here, or I'd prefer, you know, if I'm going to do the fishy dinky thing, I'd just play Pry. Um, but we'll go ahead and run a sim on this for you as well, just so you can see uh, how stupid I am. 
Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I said last video too, those new words, those words added uh, 2015 and beyond. I'm still blind to him. I missed Egypt against Mike Barron. Like, that was one of my big weaknesses coming in, and I knew that. So you can see, even though Pry keeps a worse leave and scores fewer points than Jip, um, Quackle prefers it just because you're not giving up that back O hook. Again, I think I would play Gritty if I could do it again, or maybe Pry, you know, I'm not sure, but just can't give up that O hook. I have to see that O hook. I have to know that I have to do better. So Jip comes down, and I hate myself for it, uh, especially because Joey's going to eventually play it there. Uh, Joey drops zip for 30, and I, and I feel like I'm doing a great defensive job this game, and I'm just frustrated that like Joey's already had the S that he needs, and then he's still able to score 30 on the board that I've just absolutely butchered. In fact, I want to go back to this turn one more time and just see um, how much Joey average scores on Jip. I should have checked that earlier, but um, I, I'm starting to get angry, like angry that Joey scored so much, and there's no reason to go on tilt this early in, in a game, but uh, it's giving me the crappy details here, so I can't figure that out for you. Oh well. Um, Joey plays Zip. I'm starting to get a little bit angry, and I pull I I N R S T T, and it's like, ah, that's not what I wanted to happen, you know. But the leave I kept is one of those leaves where it can go kind of either way. So this was interesting because I can play Zit for 12 holding I N R S T, or I can play like it right here for four, or I can play Tui here for three, or it here for five, you know, like. I probably want to hold INRST here, or maybe just like IRST or INST, but there's just not really any scoring play that holds a good leave, you know. Am I going to play TIN for three points? Well, maybe, you know. So so I'm going to go ahead and, and run another simulation here. Um, but what I did is, is kind of funny, actually. Um, we'll pull out all these plays. We'll leave TUI. We'll leave IT. We'll leave IT. We'll go ahead and keep 10 in. And then what I actually elected to do is just exchange IT because I didn't like setting those tiles down anywhere I felt like they gave Joey more options than they took away or or TIN didn't really it did give Joey some options but it also took away this bingo line from 9b for me so I ended up just exchanging two and, and I felt like I've played some weird scrabble this game Vane felt like a weird play and of course you can't quackle your game over the board and see, you know, was Vane stupid? Am I overthinking things? Was that too cute? Um, and then uh, Jip also didn't feel totally right to me, especially after uh, Zip came or Zip came down. Um, so I'm I'm questioning everything I've done, and then I have to make another really unorthodox play here. You can see the details don't really back this one up so much. Um, it wants me to play there. One of the big fatal flaws of Quackle though is. When it simulates, it gives your opponent a random rack unless you use this this box down here, specify partial opponent rack, to kind of guesstimate kind of what you think they have. But there's no way to tell Quackle, like, ah, I think he's kind of bingo prone, you know, he's been, been fishing. Or, like, I think he's got an S and three vowels, you know. You can put in A-E-I-S, but sometimes he has O-O-E-S, and your play sims very differently depending on those combinations. So, you know, Quackle thinks he's got maybe usually a muckier rack than they actually have just because people spend time grooming their rack to get to the point they want to be at. If I could go back and do it again, I think I would still make the exchange two here. Um, this play does look interesting, but I just feel like if I get hit by a high scoring five or six down the H column, I'm going to be very angry for the rest of the game. And just to avoid the emotional turmoil there, like maybe it's better to just exchange. TITI seems just like suicidal to me. I don't know. I would do this again. You know, that's kind of a too close to call thing, a stylistic thing. If you have input on it or if you want to tell me what I should have done, by all means, I'm, I'm open to hearing that. Um, but I exchanged two, and I've just played a weird game of Scrabble so far. Um, Joey ends up playing OF right here, and this is where I lose my mind because I suddenly become aware that Jippo is a word. And after exchanging two and getting caught up with all these one-pointers, I'm getting very, very, very angry. Um, it's just like a really frustrating game where I feel like I'm doing smart stuff that's not paying off. And then the smart stuff I think I'm doing isn't even that smart because Jip takes a back O, and I'm just all over my own head. Luckily, I've, I've drawn an S, and so I can hit Jippo, so I'm almost certain that's good. Um, and, and Rind seems to be the standard play, but I'm already feeling like I'm in a pretty bad shape. I've shut this board down 
and I am losing by 60. So uh, I actually decided to play Durrells here instead. And the reason why is because I felt like it's a lot easier to hit a D across the one column to bingo two than it is to hit an R. And I feel like the D will spook Joey a little more. Um, and it'll also give me more chances. So I gave up three points to do that. We'll see if Quackle likes that. Um, but just kind of a long-term board positioning type decision there. NT is, is definitely a better lead than LT. Um, for, for whatever reason, Quackle is really like it. Oh, yeah, that was another thing. I'm sorry. It's been so long since I actually played these Nationals games. Um, but Z-I-N and Z-E-N were possibilities after Rhymes. And so Joey's going to have easy blocks more often. So, so it was a lot, bunch of different stuff together, but I did decide to play Durrells. And you can actually see Quackle really prefers my play to Rhymes. Um, so good job me, I guess. Cool. Uh, Joey does indeed block the D with a void for 12, and this came down very fast. And sometimes there, you have like four plays that even matter on a closed board like this. But maybe, maybe Joey had some bad stuff and he needed to do it. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, so I, I had 10 drills without the uh, E, and I end up with E-E-I-I-N-O-T, and I'm, like, starting to lose my mind now. Like, come on. I went from all consonants to all vowels. All of my tiles have scored one point pretty much all game, it feels like, but I'm nowhere close to a bingo anyway. I'm getting very, very mad. And, uh... I don't want to play OI because I feel like that just gives Joey the easiest no-brainer blocks, and if he's got the Q or the X too, like, I'm just dead. OI doesn't take a back S, it's only got the back L, so that's really not even that great in open. Um, I decided to play OI right over here for six, and, uh, you know, I don't have an L to hit that line, but I, I've got to do something. I don't want to exchange three holding E-I-N-T, I don't think. Like, I don't know. I'm not totally sure what to do, but I feel fine about playing O-I here better than the O-Void plays at the top. And then Joey drops Mangles here for 75, and it's like, of course, you have an L and you have a bingo. Like, oh my god, I'm about to lose my mind. Um, I'm so angry right now. I don't think there was any other point in the tournament where I was this angry over a board, except save maybe one point in my next game uh, against Joe uh, Josh Sokol. But uh, I pulled E E I I N S T, and I did not actually initially see the bingo, and so I'm just fuming, 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 and then I'm like, oh yeah, there's a there's a seven in this rack. Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm not mad anymore. Um, the seven is cyanide, and it plays right there for 78. And it's like, oh okay, calm down. Take a deep breath. It's okay. You haven't played that badly, and you're, you're very much in this game. Like, come on now. Come on. Um, so Joey has, ugh, and he drops it for 22. Um, that's going to create a real interesting little D-hook here that might not go away for the rest of the game. Um, and what do I have on my rack but two Ds, um, A-A-D-D-R-T-W. So I, I feel like that, that was a great thing that could have happened for me. Um, and... Uh, there's, there's some stuff that you can do here. Like, I don't think you ever want to play Wad because you're just going to get absolutely destroyed underneath it. So draw seems to be the pretty standard play to do. I don't want to play Wad over here and open stuff up. Uh, Wart, uh, ATT doesn't take the back S, um, but you still don't want to do that. You know, plays can come across 15 for 15A all the time and hit you. So I think draw is just the only play up near the top that makes any sense to do. The DAW is just a much worse version of DAW that, or DRAW that scores 9 less. So just take your points there. That seems pretty obvious. Um, and then Joey drops O-U-R-I-E. So there goes my D-hook, but, you know, not a big deal. I'm down 40, and uh, I've actually got a pretty decent rag now here. A-D-E, A-A-D-E-T-X-Y. Um, I was super happy to see Aury come down because it just gives me the no-brainer X-E-D which I still think is a stupid word and I would love to see removed, but I digress. Um, X'd for 43, nothing really to say or do there, just, just play X'd, it's super defensive as well. Um, and Joey spends a good amount of time and then plays wet tap. And I'm really happy he did that because in hindsight, Joey's already done through uh, done his annotation over this game and he had A-L-N-O, N-N-O-P blank. Um, and Joey actually has two bingos available to him right now, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, he's got Napoleon making EXED, and he's got non-player. And he said over the board he saw non-player and elected not to play it. 
Um, I probably would have challenged it. I don't totally know, but I'm glad he didn't play it regardless. Uh, he, he drops Watap there for 30. Uh, and, and if you do want to know what Joey's dealing with as he's making these plays, you can go on cross tables. He's already annotated his whole side of the game. So just find my history, find the Nationals, and look at this game, and you can see what he had. Uh, he doesn't do YouTube video annotation, but you can at least see what he had and what he played. So see both sides of this game if you like. Um, a A D E O T Y is my draw. I kept A A T Y and picked up some vowels. Not super happy about that. And I'm starting to get kind of paranoid because neither of the blanks are out. Now the board is very defensive and shut down, so it's not super concerning. But like, man, I'd love to draw one of those and give me some peace of mind, right? There's really nothing to do here except to play yeast. At least I don't think so. It's 24 points. Um, it doesn't really give a ton back, especially with the X gone. You're not as worried about that triple word or triple letter square right there. I um, mean, even if he is going to drop a play there, like drop the W, or drop the F or something, I get plays back most of the time. So not a huge concern. I don't really want to go fishing right now. A D E O T. That's a bingo or die leave. And on this board, you don't bingo often, and you do die often. So we're just scoring points, and we'll see where this game takes us. Um, after yeast, Joey spends some time and then drops F O W L. So I did get hit by, by the biggest available tile left in the pool in that spot, but I'm okay, right? I can I can hit some counter plays. Uh, I draw onto this rack here, which is rotated with no spot. Um, but if you want to pause the video and do a bingo challenge, uh, there is a, an available bingo. All right. If you found it, cool. If not, all right. Uh, the bingo is Tetrapod. It plays right there through the P for 62. Um, and that's kind of alarming. Joey's opened up two enormous spots here, or potentially just one enormous spot if you've got exactly the right play. But I have a bingo and I have to play elsewhere and just leave it there. And it's like, all right, Joey, do your worst. And Joey's worst was kind of bizarre. He dropped T-H-I-C-K right there for 53. He burned a blank to do it. Um, so I'm not totally sure what that means. Um, sometimes if an opponent makes a blank with a non-bingo, um, it's because they have a second blank. I know that that is not the case because I drew the second blank after Tetrapod. Um, and I'm feeling real happy and sad at the same time. I'm happy because I have that blank. I'm sad because that cue looks like it's going to be really, really clunky and annoying in this game. And I'm ecstatic because I'm able to drop Jab there for the ultimate, like, 59-point no-brainer play. There's no reason to do anything else here. So Jab comes down. Hooray. I mean, Joey is in pretty terrible shape here. He's down 27 on a terrible board with a blank unseen. Maybe he can play a, a 9 down here, but, you know, rather than risk anything, Joey plays A-N-T right there. Um, and just to try and open up another bingo line and give himself some kind of chance. And I pull B-E-G-O-Q-R blank. And this is a huge turn. Um, and it's a turn that I absolutely wish I could have back in hindsight. Um, this is this is a pre-end game situation, and pre-end games truly are what I feel separate the 2,100 players from like the 1950 players. 1950 players are going to hit almost all the bingos and make all the obvious plays and everything, you know, I'm, I'm one of them, but racks like this are just so hard, situations like this are so hard. Um, after Joey plays Ant, I see the possibility of ammo Corn in the Unseen Pool right there to that in. Um, so maybe a couple other options as well. We'll go ahead and use the, uh, the trusty uh, a machine to find all the possibilities. But of course, in this situation over the board, you want to be doing this on your own. So we'll look for eights. We have A-C-E-E-L-M-N-O-R. Is that right? A-C-E-E-L-M-N-O-R. And we'll put in a second N. So there's canoe min to an N, as well as ammo corn. And we'll put in that T. Um, and there's nothing that ends in the T. So really, we're, we're concerned that Joey can play canoe min or ammo corn. Those are the only plays that will beat me to the end. Now the U is that maybe a different story, but uh, but I've got to decide right now. Do I want to play R O Q U E? And uh, this seems to win most of the time. But not, now I give Joey an R to bingo with, and that actually opens up other bingos: Larsener and Clamorer and Romancer. 
Um, and it leaves the N open as well for like Amalcorn and stuff. Um, do I want to play Baroque? Um, scoring 17 and blocking all the bingo possibilities but leaving that R. Um, or the, the real shining play here is QAT. Because after QAT, I don't know that there is a way Joey wins this game. We'll go ahead and look for nines to the ER. Uh, there are no nines to the ER. Um, I'm up by 15. Cotton will put me up by 36. But even like the worst case scenario for me, like if he drops uh, something down to the ER for like 30, I'm probably going to win that game. Um, you know, I just, I'm up 36. There's not a ton he can play. Romancer, maybe to the ER will score a lot, but I'm going to be able to get some points with Bog or something. I'll stack back next to his play. I think the game is mine after caught, and I just didn't think about it. You know, I didn't think about burning the blank and burning the queue and emptying the bag all at the same time. I saw Roke and I saw Baroque, and I was like, oh god, I'm going to have to decide between these two plays, and I didn't think of anything else. Um... Roke loses two bingos and to nothing else, and I kind of thought Baroque was in the same boat, so I'm like, well, let's go ahead and take away the bingos to the N, and we'll just see if he can bingo to the R. You know, there's, there's only three wrecks that can bingo to the R, there's a couple more that bingo to the N, so whatever, I'll do that. Uh, but I didn't think, what is the worst case scenario after Baroque if he's not going to bingo? What is the worst thing I can draw? I played Baroque, and I drew out of the bag... Uh, into my G, I picked up CR, and then I started to realize, like, wait, I think I'm gonna lose. I think I'm gonna lose, because all I have is Crag. I'm gonna get stuck with this C, or I'm gonna get stuck with the G, um, or maybe I'll get stuck with both of them, like, this is terrible. Joey's gonna take away Crag, he's probably gonna take away Cog as well. Joey had plenty of time to make this end game, and, uh, I was just going through different possibilities. I didn't know exactly what he would do, um, but I knew it wasn't going to end well for me. And after much, much, much deliberation, Joey elected to play Omen right here. Uh, and I've got about 10 minutes on my clock, and I, I mean, you know, I see I can do some stuff. I can drop Con, I can drop Cam, I can drop Cram, I can drop Gram, I can drop Gam. There's a lot of stuff I can do, but with AEL, Joey is almost absolutely going out. Unless someone, you know, smacks him in the face. He's got leak down here or ale down here. He's got scary stuff like ale here. Um, so I'm not in good shape at all. And I go through possibility after possibility after possibility. Like if I play cam here, what's going to happen? And I notice that even if I play cam there, Joey's able to go out with uh, lace. So it's like, okay, I can't play cam. Um, I thought about playing Cram, but if I play Cram, then Joey uh, can stick me with the G and just slow play his tiles, and there's no way I'm going to win. So I can't play Cram. Um, I thought about dropping the C down here instead so that I don't give him the comeback, and that gives him Alec for 20, and he wins. And it's like, geez, I, I just, I cannot play off my C anywhere. Um, so I'm like, well, maybe I can play Graham here, and, and, and how's that going to end up for me? And, and you know, that, that was my initial thought, but then I'm like, well, he can C-stick me and then just slow play me. Um, so Graham is probably not going to win either. But by the time I had gone through each of these games and calculated it all, I ran out of time. And uh, there was only one play I hadn't gone through and figured out what was going to happen, and that was Gam. So I decided, whatever, I'll just play Gam, I guess. And uh, I did not notice that that gave me, it, that gave Joey A-L-E right here making game for a ton of points. Now, it doesn't really matter. Joey's got other plays, I think, that win anyway. Um, oh, no, wow, he doesn't. Um, so I, I didn't know if Gam was going to win. I just put it down, and then when he played this, I was like, crap. But I didn't see any other way to win. Now, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to give you a puzzle. There is a win here. Can you find it? Pause the video if you'd like. It's ridiculous. The win here is truly ridiculous. And uh, Joey came back and told me the next day. But the win is Courier, right there, through Alry. 
Uh, I don't think I would ever see that. Well, now I know to look for Courier through Alry if it ever comes up again. You know, Nigel Richards sees that. Maybe there's two or three other players who would see that play. But that's nuts. That's ridiculous. And, uh, the game was mine. You know, if I play QAT, the game is mine. If I just play R-O-Q-U-E, it's probably still mine. Um, and I, I did none of that stuff. And I, I truly deserve to lose this game. Um, getting crushed by ALE right there was kind of a slap in the face. But, you know, it was it was a good game. And it was very entertaining. And it, it really just started to creep into my mind. Like, I'm not good enough to be a table one or table two. Um, some of these people are so much better than me. I thought Joey had, like, gone through and calculated all of the uh, sequences after Omen. Then after the game, he said no. He didn't know what was going to happen at all. It just seemed pretty solid. Um, and, and so he decided to play it. But uh, great game. Well played by Joey. Nice end game. Wish I had seen Courier. Wish I hadn't messed up the Baroque turn. But alas, so it goes. And you learn and you try and do better in your next pre-end game. Thanks for watching, guys, and try and get more up soon.